Hello, Cubbies. Welcome back to Storytime for our second week. I'm Miss Linda, and I'm here to tell you this week's story. But first, I want to go over what we learned last week, and we're going to do that with a couple of songs. Our Cubby's key verse is 1 John 4.10. God loved us and sent his son. Now we have a song that goes with that, and it goes like this. God loved us and sent his son. God loved us and sent his son. God loved us and sent his son. First John 4, 10. Why don't you sing that with me? <clears throat> God loved us and sent his son. God loved us and sent his son. God loved us and sent his son. First John 4, 10. And that way, we can remember that God really does love us because he sent Jesus, his son, to live on earth and to die for us. Now, our cubby's motto is, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, each one of us. And there's a song that goes with that, too. I bet you already know it because it's called, Jesus loves me. Why don't you try to sing that with me? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's see if we can add some actions to that. Our sign for Jesus is this. We're pointing to where the nails were in his hands. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Very good. If you were with me last year, you already know those songs. But it was nice to sing them again, wasn't it? Now, I have a pretend story to tell you. This one's not out of the Bible, but it could have happened, and it's going to teach us a lesson. I want to tell you a pretend story about a little girl named Sarah who liked to play with her good friend Emma. Even though Sarah had fun with her friend, something sad happened. Sarah loved to play outside. She loved to blow bubbles and ride her tricycle. One day, Sarah asked her friend Emma over for a play date. They had so much fun. First, they enjoyed a yummy snack. After the girls finished their snack, Sarah asked their mom, her mom if they could go outside to play. That's fine, said mom, but don't pick the flowers in Mrs. Brown's yard. Don't even go over there. Be sure you don't pick the flowers. Emma and Sarah ran to play in the playhouse, and they pretended to fix dinner. We need some pretty flowers, said, pointing to the empty cup on the table. <clears throat> there are some pretty ones in Mrs. Brown's yard. Sarah, your mom said we shouldn't pick the flowers in Mrs. Brown's yard, Emma reminded her. But our table will look so nice with flowers on it, said Sarah. I won't pick all the flowers, 
I'll only pick enough flowers to fit in the cup. So Sarah ran to the neighbor's yard and she picked a handful of the biggest, brightest tulips she could find. She ran back to the playhouse and proudly put the flowers in the cup. Later, when Sarah's mom came out to tell Emma it was time to go home, she noticed the flowers. Sarah, mother asked, did you pick the flowers from Mrs. Brown's yard? Sarah looked down at her toes. She knew she had disobeyed. Sarah, I told you not to pick Mrs. Brown's flowers. Sarah knew she had disobeyed. I'm sorry, Mama. She started to cry. Sarah, you need to tell Mrs. Brown <clears throat> that you are sorry, Sarah's mother said. So after Emma went home, Sarah and her mother walked to Mrs. Brown's house and knocked on her door. When Mrs. Brown opened the door, she noticed the wilted tulips in Sarah's hand. I did something wrong. Sarah said quietly. I picked your flowers after Mama told me not to. Mrs. Brown looked sadly at the wilted flowers. Those were the best tulips in my garden. I was going to pick them and put them in a vase on my table. My friends are coming over for dinner and I wanted the table to look pretty, she said. I'm sorry, said Sarah. I am sad about the flowers, said Mrs. Brown. But I'm glad that you told the truth. Just remember, it is never okay to disobey. Sarah and her mom walked home. Sarah was still sad about the flowers. Let's go to the store, said Sarah's mom. You can help me buy some new flowers for Mrs. Brown. She can put the new flowers on her table to make it look pretty. Sarah nodded. She knew that every time she looked at Mrs. Brown's house, she would remember that it is never okay to disobey. Boys and girls, we all do wrong things, just like Sarah. Each person you ever see <clears throat> has done wrong things. All of our cubby friends, all of our leaders, all of our adults, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, everyone has done something wrong. You could be disobeying your parents. You could be fighting with your brothers and sisters. Maybe you even lied about something. Said so You did something when you didn't or that you didn't do something that you did. That's lying. And all of that is wrong. Cubbies, when we do wrong things and disobey God, it's called sin. A sin is anything that we think, say, or do, <clears throat> excuse me, that disobeys God. Do that with me. It's anything that we think, say, or do that disobeys God. Just like the people in this picture. Looks like this girl did something that she shouldn't have and her mother is talking to her. This little boy looks like he's been in time out. I wonder what he did. This boy looks like he's pitching a fit because he wants that 
toy. And all of that is disobeying. All of that is sin. <clears throat> Remember, a sin is anything we think, say, or do that disobeys God. But God's special book, the Bible, reminds us in Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned. Romans 3, 23. Let's say that together. All have sinned. Romans 3, 23. That's our verse for this week. <clears throat> Do you see this letter A? A stands for the word all. In our verse, all have sinned. You will have an A on your cubby's vest. This letter A reminds us that all people, every boy sins, every girl sins, every grown-up sins too. Because we have sinned, because all of us have disobeyed, we need a Savior to save us from that sin, to take care of it. And I have good news, Cubbies. God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to be the Savior. We'll learn more about what Jesus did for us next week. So remember, all have sinned, but God's got a plan. He sent his son, Jesus, to be the Savior. So as we go through this week, I want you to remember that any time anything that we think, say, or do that disobeys God is a sin. But God has a plan for us. Let's time take a time and pray to God. When we pray, we can tell God we are sorry for the times that we disobey him. We also want to remember that we're going to fold our hands and close our eyes so we don't distract ourselves so that we can talk to God and so that we can make sure that we are paying attention to him. <clears throat> Let's pray for God to God. Dear God, please help us when we disobey you. Please forgive us when we sin. Help us to learn to understand that Jesus is our Savior. Help us to know that he came to help us to take away our sin. Thank you for loving us and sending Jesus. Thank you that Jesus loves us and that you sent him, your son, to earth. Thank you for loving us, God. Help us to learn to be more and more like Jesus every day. In his name we pray. Amen. Men. Thank you, boys and girls, for being with me today. I hope that you're working on your verses and doing your stories in your workbook. I see you again next week. Bye bye.